Hello, how are you doing? This is Mike again, and in this section, we're going to actually just create maybe more of a, an analogy, and I want to show you um, something that that may 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 not be as transparent to see at the very beginning. So let us say that I give you a function that is equal to a value of x minus two squared plus four, and I were to ask you about the transformations of this function. So hopefully, first of all, you all could tell me the base function is f of x equals 2x squared. The base function is f of x equals 2x squared. And you, you would be correct if you said that because this has a variable x and ultimately if we expand that out it will be to the second power. So we know that a base function of x squared is going to be a parabola. It's going to be a parabola that is centered at the origin and it opens up like such. It opens up like such because it has a positive leading coefficient. It's a positive x squared. So we know it's going to open up. If it was a negative x squared, it would open down. But if we look at these transformations, hopefully you could recognize immediately that we're going to have a horizontal shift and a vertical shift. We're going to have two different shifts, a horizontal shift and a vertical shift. The horizontal shift right here can be indicated by that value of negative 2. And again, think parentheses, marriage, marriage, they are doing opposite like my parents do. And we are going to go to the right, right two units. And then there's going to be a vertical shift indicated by this positive 4, and that's going to be consistent with the sign. So we're going to have a vertical shift up four units. So based off of this, we know that we're going to shift two spaces to the right, and then we're going to go up one, two, three, four units. So we no longer are going to have a vertex or a, a, a value that exists at zero, zero. We're going to have a new vertex that will exist at two comma four. So our new parabola is going to open up and look something like this. We're going to learn later that this apex right down here is something called the vertex. This is going to be the most minimal or most maximal, most minimum or maximum, I don't know the exact grammar there, but it's going to either be the smallest or the largest value. It's going to be the, the minimum value or the maximum value. So this right here is able to tell us a lot because we know so much about transformations. What would if I, what would if I tell you, what would, if I, what would you say if I were to say, if I were to tell you that x minus 2 squared plus 4 is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 8. What were you to say if I were to say this? So let's go ahead and see if this is actually true. So if I want to expand out x minus 2 squared, this would give us x minus 2 times x minus 2. We would still have this value of plus 4 at the end. So this would give us x squared, fullness this out, minus 4x x times x gives you x squared, x times negative 2 gives you minus, sorry, minus 2x, I'll do it step by step. Minus 2x, minus 2 times this x gives you another minus 2x, minus 2 times minus 2 gives you a value of plus 4, plus 4, and then we realize that we have this value of plus 4 at the end, so this actually gives us x squared minus 4x and plus 4 plus 4 gives you a value of plus 8, which is what we saw right here. Notice this form, this form right here is called the standard form. We discussed this last lecture and this is the standard form of a quadratic. This is the standard form of a quadratic. And that doesn't really tell us very much. If we look at x squared minus 4x plus 8, that doesn't really tell us very much. I can't determine the new vertex from there because I don't know any of the shifts. I don't know if we went to the right or to the left or if we went up or we went down. So that doesn't really tell us very much. However, this form told us a lot more. It told us a lot about that vertex. And that vertex gives us a good plan of action to attack the rest of the, the rest of the problem, the rest of that problem. So this leads us to our topic, to our topic, and it's going to be the other form of a quadratic, and it's going to be called the complete square form, oops, form of a quadratic. equation. 
So <clears throat> this formula may seem a little daunting, but it is something we can work through. It's going to be f of x equals a times x minus h squared all plus k. You say, oh, that looks horrible. But let's go back and look at that example. I'm going to go back and look at that example and examine what we actually have to know. So we have a value of x minus 2, I believe it's x minus 2 squared still plus 4. So notice here, notice here that our negative h, let me do it in a different color so we can see it, our negative h was equal to a value of negative 2. So in this example we have negative h was equal to a value of negative 2. And then we had our value of positive k, and that was equal to a value of positive 4. So k equals to about a value of positive 4. And then further, we had this value of a. And a, even though we did not see it, was equal to a value of 1. So we're going to learn a lot of characteristics about this, this complete square form because it tells us a lot. And you could remember, and in most textbooks and a lot of, a lot of different faculty will tell you the vertex in this form will be equal to the formula of negative h comma k. And I say, oh, that looks horrible. I don't, I don't want to remember that. But if we remember, if we negate h, if we negate h, if we negate h, so we're thinking, okay, we negate h, our h was a value of negative 2. So that actually implies that h equals to the value of positive 2. So our vertex here would be over 2, opposite of our sign. And then it's going to be the same value of k, so we're going to have that k, and that value is a value of positive 4. So we have a new vertex of 2 comma 4. But I hate memorizing formulae. I am so bad at memorizing formulae. I'd rather know that my vertex was a 2 comma 4 because I recognize my shifts. That is your discretion. If you want to recognize the vertex being 2 comma 4 because you recognize your shifts, more power to you. I actually encourage that. You can always remember it's going to be the opposite of this sign and consistent with this sign. That's fine. But I always like to remember the shifts. The next, the next important part is they discuss this variable a, this variable a. So if a is greater than zero, if a is greater than zero, the parabola opens up and there will be a min value. So if the parabola opens up, it's going to look something like this. So a min will occur down there. And at that vertex, there will be a min at the vertex. However, if your leading coefficient is negative or less than 0, the parabola opens down, and there will be a max. So that means that we're going to open down and there's going to be a max. So it could look something like this. And that would be our max value. The vertex would be the max value. There are all these little kudu tots that you have to recognize when it, when it comes to this complete square form. But however, if you just remember all the different transformations of your original graph, we can look at the complete square form and identify a lot. And the majority of what you can identify is going to be based off of this vertex, and then also whether or not your leading coefficient is positive or negative. We'll learn about something in the next section. It's going to be called the axis of symmetry. But for right now, all I want you to do is recognize the complete square form and what some of those parts mean.